Today I want to talk about my 16 by 28 gable garage. When I built this two years ago, I utilized a lot of YouTube videos for help on what to do, what not to do. And this is my way of contributing to the community and maybe helping you decide what you want to do when you build your garage. Let's go take a look at it. Starting on the front side, we have what they call a carriage style garage door. Uh, I really like the traditional look that it provides. Also, this was an insulated door and at some point when I finish out the inside, I wanted to make sure we had maximum uh, heat retention as well as keeping the, the heat out. Go around to the side here. One of the options that this was originally specced out as was kind of a steel man door. Again, keeping the traditional look. I decided to go with kind of just a basic uh, wooden barn door. We've got our double windows. This here opted for aluminum. The other option available were vinyl windows. My thought was, well, it's a garage slash shed slash barn. And I decided just to save a little bit of money by going uh, aluminum windows. Not much going on around here in the back. One thing that we originally had in the specs was uh, a window up there. And as I started looking at different models and pictures, I decided that the window just didn't fit. Um, the, other, the other thing was I didn't plan on spending a lot of time up in the loft, so I didn't really feel that a window was necessary. The material, as I said, I believe is what they call T111. This garage manufacturer calls it Duratemp. One thing that I've not been super happy about with the material and the, is more so the painting process of the manufacturer. Uh, if you look here, you can kind of see in these grooves where some of the paint has begun to chip and peel away. Wasn't, wasn't super thrilled about that. Um, I don't know the process and why it did that, but I ended up this spring going to Lowe's and getting some Valspar paint and repainting, repainting the sides. Come next spring, next summer, I'm gonna get some, or, uh, some latex caulking. I'm gonna try to seal these up a little bit. But outside, like I said, not, not too much going on. We've got the, the standard shingle roof. Again, the house is shingled and the wife just did not want a metal roof garage with a shingled roof house. And there's the cat. We come inside. I ended up installing a little bit of weather stripping on the door to try to keep any moisture out. Uh, I believe 36 inch width. As you can tell, the first thing you notice is no concrete. My plan is ultimately to pour a concrete floor in here, but uh, I decided to spend more money on my fishing hobby and a trailer for that hobby and well, maybe someday we'll get concrete. But uh, starting at the front, again, there's our insulated carriage house door. Manufacturer and the design spec, I had them just go ahead and put a couple shelves in. I'm kind of sometimes not the most handy and a little bit lazy, and it was easier for me just to have them put the shelves in when they build it. We've got 50 amp power coming in here on the front side looped it up through. When I trenched the power, I ended up trenching the ethernet cable just in case I ever want to have uh, some wired internet. The two lights out on the front of the garage are on a photocell sensor. They're auto on and off. For the wall finish, um, again, I, I just wanted to do something unique and this is the wife was the driving force behind this. We've got uh, just your corrugated steel, obviously, on the bottom. And then up here, just, you know, various cuts of pallet wood that we sanded and stained. We did that along the sides to kind of provide a unique look. And then on the back here, just a quarter inch un untreated sanded plywood. 
There's a possibility that someday I decide to paint it, but it's hard saying when and if I'll do that. Had the uh, garage builder also build out a workbench for me. That way, as soon as the garage was done, I could just move the workbench in and start moving all my stuff in. Uh, as you can tell, the workbench is filled up right now with some fishing equipment. I've got the, the toolbox. Obviously, you got to have a TV in here. As you look, ceiling is just unfinished right now. Um, not sure what I will do up here eventually. I've thought about painting it black. I've thought about painting it white. And I've also thought about insulating it too and covering it for when we get concrete, we'll have a good, good insulation area. Wanted it nice and bright, so I got on Amazon, got four foot LED light fixtures. Um, ran those to outlets that way. If I need to move, add, and subtract, anything like that, I can just plug and play real quick. Did not want to do any hardwired lights. Coming up the steps, one of the options for a loft was a fold-down ladder. Again, thinking of versatility, the fold-down ladder, I did not like very much. I wanted to be able to lug something heavy safely up the steps if I had to. So like I said outside, I opted for the 1212 roof. Uh, I'm six foot in height, and by going a 1212 pitch, that gave me a lot of extra uh, standing height. Some of the companies that I talked to, they only utilized attic trusses. And one thing I did not really enjoy about the attic trusses, they kind of kind of lost some of the side space just on the designs they showed me. I want, I like the, the true rafter ceiling. At some point, uh, we're going to put some insulation through here, get this insulated up, closed up, and uh, just energy efficient. Just got a bunch of tool storage, some fishing equipment at the end, uh, some camping gear, just some odds and ends up here. But again, I, I went with that, that full loft just for future future needs i never know what i might need up here as the garage has had time to settle uh different little areas pop up that draws my attention you know the plan is to kind of seal that up i want to seal across here my garage manufacturer utilized just a, a corrugated plastic product for soffit venting to allow some airflow once once I do get concrete, again, my plan is I want to try to enclose this stairwell area. I want to put a door leading up to the loft. I want to try to close that off some. I'll probably end up getting a small electric heater to hang from the ceiling. I don't plan on doing a whole lot of stuff out here in the winter, but it's also would be nice to have a heated garage. Forgot to mention that underneath all the finished area, I did go ahead and put um, some fiberglass insulation matting all the way around. So that area is insulated. 50 amp power, if I didn't mention that. Everybody kind of thought I was nuts for only going 50 amps. Hey, what if you want to want to want to run a welder or a big air compressor? Well, I don't weld and I don't need a big air compressor. So I opted to go 50 amps and... So far in two years, I've not had any issues with it. Foundation-wise, one of the options available was obviously pour a concrete slab, which would have required, per my concrete guy, a, uh, a footer all the way around. Um, again, that talking through some options, he suggested that they do what they call the post beam foundation. So it's kind of like a pole barn. They came in, uh, sunk in several posts throughout, lopped them off, and then they attached a sill plate right here all the way around the structure. One thing that I afterwards kind of appreciated about the post beam foundation, I felt like I got a little, little more height out of the building. Once I get 
my concrete into this level. I'll have a nice, good ceiling height. I won't feel like I'm hitting my head off of stuff. Right now, wife's got the lawn tractor parked in here. That'll eventually make its way to the shed. The kayak trailer, that's going to go to a friend's house for storage. And then we'll have enough room in here to park a car if we need to. One of the reasons we went with the 16 by 28 is we didn't want anything that was too large that would take over the yard. But we also didn't want something that was too small and later down the road we would regret it. We opted for the single garage door. Again, we don't necessarily use this as a car garage, but at some point in our future, if we ever decide the house, decide to sell the house, we wanted to make sure this was marketable as a single car garage. So future plans of the garage, obviously, like we said in there, uh, some concrete flooring, get that finished up. I want to finish insulating it, sealing it up, put a, uh, a electric furnace, electric heater, maybe even a uh, air conditioning system of some sort. And then maybe the last and final piece may be to put some sort of gutter system on here to uh, get some of that rain and I can't get it to focus. Oh, we're all out of focus. Put some sort of gutter system on there. That way when it rains, I can direct that water away from the foundation a little bit better than just sloping it does. But I appreciate you watching. I hopefully you can find something of value in this video for when you build your garage.